Yeah. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to make a motion to have the clerk run the meeting. Court. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, have the clerk take the roll. Supervisor Fountain, absent. Treasurer Horning, here. Clerk Chopu, here. Trustee Colian, here. Trustee Germain, absent. Trustee Harper, here. Trustee Petrucci, here. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is approval of the meeting agenda. So moved. Support. Motion by. Trustee Colliani, support by Trustee Harper. Any discussion? If I may, uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, just a couple of friendly amendments. Uh, one, there was a numeration error you may notice under 8, pending a new business, the uh, lettering was off. The compensation commission determination should actually be last on that list. So if we move that down to keep the Lake Tyrone items together. Uh, and if it pleases the board, I also propose that we move the, the Settlers Park benches up to 8A. Uh, we have a guest uh, here this evening for that. I have no objection to that. Would be the All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item on the agenda, we have a proclamation. I'd like to read the proclamation. Uh, proclamation uh, honoring uh, Karen Carla Grissom. Whereas our community is known for its generosity and engagement with one another, and whereas the volunteers within Heartland Township self selflessly give of their time and have become a vital and positive force within Heartland Township, that charity and social responsibility manifest all that is good in an individual, and that well-being of a community is largely dependent upon helping others, and whereas these efforts are highly valued by township leaders and the community at large and are deserving of public recognition. Now, therefore, we, the Heartland Township Board of Trustees, do hereby acknowledge and proclaim the efforts of Carla Grissom, Heartland Friendly by Nature Volunteer of the Year. In witness hereof, we have set our hands hereto on the 19th day of May, 2015. <laughs> Carla would like us to step down for a picture in the front with you. item on the agenda is the call to the public. Anyone? No one? Okay, we'll move on to the approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Support. Any discussion? Who is the second on that? We both said it. Either one, take your pick. Take your pick. <laughs> Joe's turn. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Pending new business. 
Uh, as we discussed, we were going to move the purchase of the Settler Park benches up to the first item. Bob, if you want to step forward. Good evening. We're uh, here tonight to uh, basically express the three options that we have with regards to the benches out at the parks, uh, particularly Sutterler's Park at this time. Um, been working with Mike from the high school, and we've come up with three options on the table. Uh, one of them would be to uh, basically design and construct the benches as uh, was originally our original intentions. The second would be to purchase the benches in kit form and then assemble them and install them. And the last option would be to purchase them outright. So there was an email that went out to the thread that went out to the board last week and uh, Bob or Mike you can elaborate. You've got some recommendations regarding um, uh, doing the design build approach with uh, at least some of the benches is maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Is that in Mike, I don't want to speak on your behalf, but uh, essentially I've been working with Mike and uh, understanding then our, our timeline that we are, we're under with regards to the benches and our uh, intentions to have these installed this year. And Mike had suggestion, suggested that it would be feasible to have the benches installed this summer if we were to buy them in kit form and have them assembled. Um, the unfortunate circumstance with that scenario is there's really not a cost savings to the township. The kits are actually the same price or within uh, $50 of what it would cost uh, to buy them outright. So I uh, just wanted to bring that information here to the table for discussion. With uh, the kit that you're referring to, would it look like the, the green... Uh, one, on packet page 195? Yes, that is what the uh, Park Advisory Committee had recommended. Uh, the suppliers have also recommended going with the 4x4 four four recycled posts as opposed to the standard 4x2 uh, recycled posts. They tend to warp over time. Um, they get a much longer lifespan out of this material. It is a recycled material. There is virtually zero maintenance. Um, so just some food for thought as we discuss this. So uh, I understand the options. One is um, we purchase them and we have them installed by someone else. Correct. We purchase them and they have uh, students from the uh, high school install some or all of them. That is correct. And the third option is we could resort to having the students design and install benches. Um, obviously that particular option may take a little bit longer as far as what our intentions were to get them installed. The other parameter that may <coughs> be somewhat limiting is this particular recycled material. If we choose to go this route, um, it's very vendor specific and the cost to buy the material is much higher than your standard would. Uh, the suppliers and the manufacturers purchase in such large quantities that um, we would not be able to get those quantity discounts that they, they are able to get when they manufacture benches. Well, I mean, this is a question for Mike. If, if, okay, if we didn't do the benches, is there, do we have something on the drawing board that could be designed by the, the kids for uh, in the next year or so that we may want to install and put in the park? Um, we yeah, Joe, about some, like, one of the things that uh, when Bob and I first started to discuss this and try to figure out how the students could get more involved, uh, one of the discussions was to have uh, somewhat of a competition. And that competition then would come up with different <coughs> designs and plans to present to the board. <coughs> After presenting to the board, uh, we would then choose which three, and we could actually build some uh, prototypes or models that would give you a better perspective of what it was about. What I found in the preliminary and their design work was they were all over the boards with materials, from concrete to steel to, to wood and so forth. 
One of the things that I mentioned to Bob was, um, you know, could we get a standard material that the board would like to work with as we move forward with uh, all of our designs? Um, that came out of your one committee, um, the Parks Committee, and they had a suggestion for us there. Uh, that gave us a little bit better direction, Joe, in terms of what we could do or, you know, not do. One of the things that's been suggested in number three with us coming up with designs would be to utilize the kits, per se, in most of the park, but then use uh, the students' designs more for specialized areas. Uh, we've even discussed, you know, even the cemeteries and, and different uh, mm -hmm. projects like that that you guys have discussed for benching in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, there's creative sides, like I've said, they've, they've designed and looked at different things from concrete to even utilizing material like this in, in different ways. I have a question for Bob. Um, I see your quote here, um, 14303. Yes. Um, does that include the concrete? That does not include the concrete. Uh, how, how much more are we talking about to have the concrete underneath the branches? Um, they, it varies. If we, you know, it, we certainly are open to options. If we wanted to pour a slab, that's going to be much more money. Um, the, what this would include was basically digging the holes, putting uh, the straight posts in, and then burying them. You putting some sort of gravel back down. So they would be buried in the ground. Wouldn't necessarily need to be concrete. This is what the manufacturer is claiming. But if we wanted to put down a concrete pad under the complete bench, um, they've seen where other municipalities do that for mowing purposes or weed, you know, weed control, if you will. But this this cost here does include installation without concrete. We could certainly add a bag of your, your standard. Home Depot quick creed or something of that. Just as safe as from vandalism? Mm -hmm. What's that? I'm sorry? Is it just as safe from vandalism? What's that? The, 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 your, the method you're, you're quoting Yes, yeah, absolutely. The, the key is you're trying to prevent it from um, basically somebody lifting it up, taking it out. They're not going to be able to bend them. Basically, they bury them about three and a half feet in the ground. So there's certainly not any way somebody's going to lift them out once they've settled. Okay. And is there, how much of a cost difference is it? Well, you know, and, and that was something I wanted to kind of work with the board. If we wanted to go with a concrete slab, um, depending on how many benches and, and where the location is, something at Settlers Park, we're probably looking in the neighborhood of $150 a pad if we were to do a full pad under um, under the actual bench itself. $150 difference or $150 for the pad? $150 for the pad itself. So it would be $150 per bench on top of this cost. But what would we save not doing it the other way? I mean, there's got to be a savings from not putting it in the way you're suggesting it. I mean, the difference might only be $100 a pad. It's still the posts still need to be buried and the posts still have, uh, uh, yeah I'm yeah. sorry I, I was the posts are still going to need to be buried either so so with or without the pad you still got to do the posts right. right and they okay. said basically the concrete don't look at it as a vandalism preventative measure it's more for grass yes. and weed control it's cosmetic yeah is what they recommended it for let me phrase it that way okay. And then, um, Joe, just to let you know, when when the committee was talking about the benches with the schools, and everything, uh, one of the things that we, we discussed was um, if we went with these benches here, uh, we still have more benches we're going to need, and they all don't have to look identical. You can have a different area of the park with different types of benches, and the schools could do those. So that's what, some of the discussion that we had. And also, we can add um, in our TAP grant application, there were benches called out uh, in the TAP grant application that will be are eligible for the TAP grant. It was a higher budgeted bench, a more decorative type bench, and perhaps that may be an option as well. For the village area. For the village area, if we're awarded that grant, which we'll know in July. Yeah. So the, the couple of questions for the board tonight is one of the items was the uh, you're still uh, suggesting going forward with a design build program on a select few and I don't know that we named a number of benches that we would target but that those would be for specific or special areas of the park. Do you have a number in mind for how many that might be? 
I, you know, I would have to refer to Mike or defer to Mike. I think it would depend, correct me if I'm wrong, on the amount of students in that particular course. Um, but, you know. Yeah, if we did look at option three with the specific benching, uh, we were kind of looking at different areas that might be themed. Or, um, you know, there's been discussion of um, a butterfly park or something like that, garden. So um, I would give basically those themes out. So I would assume maybe, you know, maybe four different designs. Uh, we're not talking probably in that, situ that scenario, you know, six-foot bench, but maybe something a little bit more. Uh, decorative or detailed in that situation. What would be a feasible timeline to, for that? Well, at this point now, with the design and build aspect, that would have to be going into next year. That could be the first, you know, curriculum item that we do. That could be something the design starts day one, basically. Then we would set up a presentation to the board, or you guys would then choose, and then we could move forward with that. So, um, you know, you. that would be within the first month of school that we could actually approach that. The reason we kind of came back to the, I, I think the number was somewhere around 27 different benches for uh, different aspects of the paved area out here uh, was the simple fact that the students could still get involved. We could get them going, working with the different materials uh, because it did look like that was a material of choice from, from uh, the board of the township in, in that sense. So that was our approach, uh, trying to get the students more involved, but also get them a little bit more familiar with that material, and then they could do a little bit of design work with it and see what they could do with that material. So is there a consensus from the board on that mm -hmm. approach for a select few in that timeline? I like is that. Okay. That's fine with me. Mm -hmm. So then for the remainder of the benches, the, then the option is we can do the kits and the students could assist with that or we can just get them installed. As we said, there's no cost difference. I don't know what the timeline might be for the student installation. Obviously, we could have more could uh, do the, the install of the regular installation quicker. Does the board have a preference uh, on that approach? I'd go with the, form, or the former. I'd go with the ladder I guess just have them installed yeah um, part of the reason is I think we want to get these in and the school year is kind of over with right now so the, I mean I, you know I don't know if we'd have any um, students available necessarily for the summer right well, Joe, the only thing I can speak to that is uh, we have a top-notch program coming out of Michelle Otis um, over at the and, and they do a lot of different work over the summer too I mean that could be something that we could approach you know, um, if you needed a certain amount in over the summer, I know. That's How, if we get them done professionally, Bob, do they come out and just assemble them here and install them? I mean, if, who does that? No, though the, the supplier we get them from is responsible for turnkey delivery. I'll phrase it that way. Mm -hmm. So they actually assemble them off site, okay. and then they bring them in out to the site once we mark where we would like them to go. Do they install them on the site then? Yeah, they, uh -oh. they are responsible for digging the hole and yep. cementing them in. Yep. I kind of like that idea since it's getting so late in the year, and then let Mike's class take over and do the specialty areas. But I'd like to see him get in. I, I agree with you, Kathy. Yeah, on the cement side of it, um, would we have to go with a supplier for the cement, or is that something that... We can certainly do that after the fact, too. That's not required at the time of installation. You still have to sink them in the ground, so if weeds or grass become kind of a nuisance after the fact, we can certainly have a slab board. Yeah, the, the proposed spec here for install is a hole in stone. There's no concrete that is in this correct. one, right? Yeah. It'd be us adding. If you see that doesn't work, we can go and yeah. add the cement later. Your consensus on that, so we will move forward then with the the uh, uh, install direct from the supplier, and then we'll work with the the students on that design build approach, and look forward to see what comes out of that. Then I I would just simply add um, that we Bob and I will put together a timeline for that approach for those designs, and you know present that to you if that was the choice. Uh, to go forward, making sure that we have timelines that we're actually hitting with the design and materials and so forth. I think from everything the board's talked about, that the, having the students design those is definitely desired, so I uh, guess we'll look for that timeline. Thanks for coming, Mike. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I, I appreciate your time and uh, just the idea of involvement with the students. That's outstanding. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Thank you. Bob. Yeah. You
Uh, Bob, is this uh, proposal ready to approve tonight? Because we didn't have it. We, we just had it as a discussion item. I don't know if the board's ready to move forward, we could do that. Um, or is it? If I could, real quick, we. Yeah. I, the, the reason why I would rather hold off for this evening is because we were originally going to do heritage park benches. Then the park advisory committee had recommended doing a high needs assessment to see what they they may prefer bleachers or something of that nature, and perhaps we can do a cost sharing. Um, after reaching out to Haya, Haya has indicated that um, really there's not any enough benches you could use to suit all the fields. If we're looking at 15 benches for 10 fields, it's just not really feasible. Um, they said the majority of their parents and uh, participants bring their own chairs. That's kind of way the, the model works. Um, however, they did recommend that uh, the majority of the time when they come out there, there are other patrons in the park who have nothing to do with Haya, and they're usually reading a book or in their car eating lunch. So they, they felt it would add value to simply install some benches around the perimeter, perimeter of the park, regardless of where the fields are, independent of that. Close to the parking lot, was that, or? They said, you know, perhaps some by the woods or whatever it may be, but they said don't necessarily gear it towards Haya and the sporting activities. They they view many other patrons out at the park, and they think they would be better suited for those people. So what I would like to do with the blessing is bring back a proposal that includes both Heritage Park and, as well as Settlers Park. Okay. All right. That's fine. Next item on the agenda was the Lake Tyrone Sewer uh, 185 contract amendment. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, this um, uh, we've already approved the 185 contract, as you recall, and uh, this amendment is in as a result of a contractor bid coming in higher than estimated, and so this really is just an adjustment for that. Uh, you should find everything else to be in order there, and uh, the resolution is offered uh, to you. I'll move to approve the resolution to create the Lake Tyrone Sewer SAD. Support. Just uh, a roll call vote. No. If it's a resolution, it's a call the roll. Not a resolution, is it? It is a resolution. You've historically done roll calls. Okay. Uh, Supervisor Fountain, absent. Uh, Treasurer Horning? Here. I mean, yes. Clerk <laughs> <laughs> Joe Few? Yes. Trustee Collier? Yes. Trustee Germain? Absent. Trustee Harper? Yes. Trustee Petrucci? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, next item is the Lake Tyrone SID resolution. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, a couple of late additions on this uh, this uh, project working right up to the wire. These resolutions uh, came from our bond attorney, John Axe's office, and we filled in some blanks. And if you access the latest uh, agenda packet on, on the server, you'll have an updated version of that resolution that includes the, the description of the, the district, uh, the assessment role, and the uh, uh, those numbers. And so those numbers are um, have been confirmed confirmed right up to this afternoon. The uh, total assessment uh, for each property is 21298 um, And uh, this resolution would set the public hearing for the SAD to be the next uh, regular meeting on June 2nd. And there'd be one more action in this to uh, confirm that role after that. I'll move resolution. Here. Resolution regarding the Livingston County Lake Tyrone Sanitary Sewer, excuse me, Lake Tyrone Sanitary Drain Improvements, the creation of the 2015 Lake Tyrone Special Assessment District, the preparation of the Lake Tyrone Special Assessment role, and setting a hearing on the 2015 Lake Tyrone Special Assessment District and the Special Assessment role, therefore. I support it. I think it, it's worthy to just one comment. I mean, this has been a something that's been going, uh, been looked at this project for about it's got to be at least ten, close to ten years. 
um, this board is, uh, originally looked at this project, what, about three or four years ago, and then they, uh, in terms of setting up an SAD through the Chapter 20 drain, and now um, it's actually, uh, this is a project that's going to connect this these group of property owners to um, the Livingston Genesee Regional System, correct? Yep. Hopefully improve the link. Okay, we'll have the clerk take the roll. Uh, Supervisor Fountain, absent. Treasurer Horning? Yes. Clerk Chofu, yes. Trustee Colleen? Yes. Trustee Germain? Absent. Trustee Harper? Yes. Trustee Petrucci? Yes. Motion passes. Next item is the uh, distribution of the pro proposed 2015 update to the comprehensive plan. I don't know if uh, Trustee Claney has anything to add. This is just a formality. We know, of course, the Planning Commission has been working on this for some time. There's quite a bit of documentation in your packet to that end. Um, it, it does require uh, the Plan Enabling Act does require that the board uh, approve the distribution of the proposed plan as the next step. I'll move to approve the distribution of the proposed update to the Heartland Township Comprehensive Plan by the Planning Commission Secretary. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next item is the resolution of the board's authority regarding the comprehensive plan. Yes, and, and this is another formality of the Planning Enabling Act. This is actually a nuance that we I don't recall us addressing the last update we did in 2011. But the act requires the board to formally assert its authority to uh, approve or disapprove of the master plan um, or to by default give it to the Planning Commission. Historically, uh, the board has reserved that, that authority to do that. This, this resolution would formalize that past practice. I move to approve the resolution asserting the board's authority to approve or reject the comprehensive plan. Second. Okay. The clerk call the roll. <coughs> Supervisor Fountain, absent. Treasurer Horner? Yes. Clerk Chofu? Yes. Trustee Colliang? Yes. Trustee Germain? Absent. Trustee Harper? Yes. Trustee Petrucci? Yes. Motion passes. Next item is the road bond resolution. Uh, we're celebrating resolution night in Heartland Township. Mm -hmm. uh, these next two items are also paired together. These are for the road bonds, uh, the projects that are, are set to go. Uh, the first resolution is to authorize the, the moving forward with selling those bonds. And uh, and the, uh, the second resolution is the continuing disclosure as required uh, by securities regulations. I'll move to approve the bond resolution for capital improvement bond series 2015. Support. Uh, discussion. The clerk call the roll. Uh, Supervisor Fountain, absent. Treasurer Horning. Yes. Clerk Chofu. Yes. Trustee Colliane. Yes. Trustee Germain. Absent. Trustee Harper. Yes. Trustee Petrucci. Yes. Motion passes. <laughs> And are we on the uh, resolution for the continuing disclosure? I move to approve the resolution approving continuing disclosure to provide uh, by the Township of Heartland. Support. Uh, discussion. So call the roll. Again, Supervisor Fountain, absent. Treasurer Horning? Yes. Clerk Chofu, yes. Trustee Collier, yes. Trustee Germain, absent. Trustee Harper, yes. Trustee Petrucci, yes. Motion passes. Uh, brings us to the um, Compensation Commission 2016 determination. 
We don't vote on that, do we? Again, no action required by the board unless you wish to uh, reject it. Thoughts or discussion? Motion, do we need a motion? Don't need a motion. You no. can move on to the next agenda. Okay. Takes care of the pending and new business. Uh, board reports. Uh, Trustee Harper. No report. Trustee Petrucci. No report. Clerk has no report. Trevor Horning. No report. Trustee Colleen. No report. Okay. Manager Open. Uh, I think, Mr. Clerk, uh, just a couple of highlights from the operational report. Uh, and actually two things that aren't there. Uh, you do have a copy of the new board protocol manual you approved at uh, the last meeting, uh, so that's there for your edification. And uh, the uh, just a quick update on the carnival uh, that the board approved. Uh, there are uh, a couple of conditions that have not yet been met. Uh, we're working closely with uh, the health department and the applicant to make sure those are met in time. Um, and. Uh, that is certainly our goal. Uh, we'll keep you posted if for some reason they're unable to meet those conditions. Um, uh, and a clarification, there is some um, uh, some of the uh, promotional materials that are out there are suggesting that that might be open on Wednesday. Um, that is not the case. The board did not approve that. And uh, uh, so we're making sure that everybody understands that. Um, and we'll be monitoring that situation. And if anything develops, we'll be sure to let you know. Just wanted to give you an update on that. We have uh, uh, the other other things from the operational report. One, I, di I did want to have a, a little bit of discussion or feedback from you on operational reports. Uh, as you know, this format has been the same since my first day here. I brought that with me and we, we try to use that as a valuable communication tool. You, of course, are the audience and, and we, we want to know what works best for you, what is your expectation from those reports, uh, what are your perspectives on it. So I am interested in hearing that offline as well, but if there are any thoughts to share now about what would work best, we think there's opportunity to improve those and make those more valuable to you. Um, um, we wouldn't want to do that without hearing that from you either. Some of the, the thoughts are, are around, you know, the content, the relevancy of the content, and is it the right, you know, not too long, not too short to, to cover, uh, to give justice to the content. Uh, any sections uh, that we may consider taking out or adding new information, uh, we'd be interested in. And then about the frequency of how often we would publish those. So we've been having internal conversations. If you have any uh, strong thoughts about those, please do let me know. Or if you have comments now, that's fine too. Just a quick note on the retreat as an update. Uh, we are we are talking with Dr. Bender on August 10th, Monday, August 10th. Um, I think we will have a full agenda that day. Uh, we'll probably start uh, um, uh, somewhere either mid-morning or noon, uh, noon time, and go into the early evening. Uh, we will. Uh, the administrative committee is starting to talk about putting together a draft agenda and make sure that all makes sense, and we'll bring that back to you. Um, and then, uh, and then probably have a follow-up meeting the next evening on Tuesday, August 11th, uh, without Dr. Bender uh, to cover all the ground that is out on the table. So more to come on that. We'll put together a draft agenda. Just wanted to put you on notice that some those are the dates to kind of pencil in uh, and plan around. Are we having it here? Uh, I think the 10th will be off-site, um, and then the 11th would be probably back here. Um, aren't we also including uh, employees in this? And that's part of it, and that's adding to the day, and, and we're trying to figure out the best. Dr. Bender had some suggestions on that, um, and uh, the administrative committee was talking about that a little bit, too, to make sure that you know we get them there at the right time, so to speak. Yeah, it's not all the employees. It's the directors. The directors, yes, right. It's four people. 
Um, and I did also want to highlight, you know, there's a lot of activity going on with wireless towers right now. We do have a pending proposal for Heritage Park. And then late last week, we uh, Crown Castle had a proposal for an additional tenant at our existing tower behind the fire hall. Um, they're, they, of course, want approval yesterday, uh, but, you know, so they're trying to move things quickly. As I get information, I'll share that share that with you. Uh, so that may be coming. Uh, two more updates. Uh, uh, one is uh, just maybe a couple of thumbs up, really, uh, on our road millage. Uh, you know, Bob and his team are doing a great job of keeping up with those projects, and I do just want to give uh, credit due as well to the Livingston County Road Commission. They've been very good to work with on these projects, and uh, uh, I think the outcome is just better for everybody, so I wanted to acknowledge that. And acknowledge Public Works as well for the large item cleanup day uh, on Saturday. Uh, uh, we don't have the numbers yet, but uh, everything is indicating we had a lot of participation from the residents and getting positive feedback about it, so I wanted to uh, give a thumbs up there as well. Oh, I had an inquiry from a couple of residents about um, electronics. You know, people are starting to collect a lot of old, older computers and things like that. Maybe next year if we could get an idea of uh, um, if there's a way of getting, you know, uh, adding that and what that cost might be. We, I'm not saying we would do it, but is that something we can look into? We can certainly look into it and talk about it in the budget planning. Okay, and maybe there's a grant or something that... It, it, something from the environmental it, DEQ or something like that that can help get rid of those um, old computer monitors and computers. Okay. And while we're on the subject, last night I was at the school board meeting and tons of people thanking us for the cleanup day and they said how organized and how quick and how, you know, they arrived at different times and it was so organized and people just said there was never that big of, they didn't feel rushed and people helped them get their stuff out. Lots of compliments last night and thought I'd pass those on to you, Bob, and your team. Has there ever been a limitation on what you can bring, specifically speaking, regarding the tires? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we had a... It will be now. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've never... There seemed to be one group that was bringing in trailer pulls of tires. It's wow. like... I mean, if we ever... No, we should really look never This was to. not designed to be a commercial... An nope. opportunity for a commercial enterprise to use it as a as a way of getting rid of what they would typically have to pay for mm -hmm. you know what I mean it, it's it's really designed to be residential and you know at the end of the day um, you know, someone bringing in a whole, whole, whole load of tires is, is just really a rather unreasonable I, I'm surprised that they did think it that way but that's there's always somebody perhaps that in every walk of life, they try to take advantage of the situation. We didn't take them all. The good news is, of course, we do have the DEQ grant that uh, should actually cover most, if not all, of that. Well, and, it, and it gets tires out of the out of places they shouldn't be and puts them in the right spot. So. Right. Well, but we'll have to put a limitation. And, and at the end of the day, we still don't want them dumping them in yep. the drains and the ditches, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's better to get, to get rid of them. We did have someone a few years ago also that brought a lot of uh, engine oil. I don't know if we do anymore. We just that was just that Eagle Scout project. The yeah, county the county does that in the fall, mm -hmm. right? Has it yeah. waste. I still think that it's too bad we couldn't continue that program because that was a good program. So. Do anything, enough money. Money yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the end of my report. Happy to answer any questions the board may have. No questions for Manager Whitman. Move on to the information discussion. We're going to take a brief recess. We kind of put that in for a discussion type item if you wanted to do that. We, do we need to take a recess at all? Okay, if there's nothing pending, can we just. Do we need a recess? Yeah, there is not. You can carry on. The administrative committee did talk about uh, uh, the idea of maybe returning to the previous practice of taking a recess um, for the, uh, for, the for the broadcast portion. But if you want to carry on, that's what's your pleasure. Carry on. So keep it back.
So next time. We can discuss that another time as well. Okay. Can we talk about the consolidated trash one first? I'd like to hear a little bit more since Bob's here on that. And I'd be able to fill us. He'll be here for the Dunham Road sidewalk. Oh, yeah, he'll okay. be <laughs> <laughs> He's not going anywhere. Oh, okay. Well. Let's move on to the try and get you out of here. Uh, move on to the Dunham Road sidewalk, son. Come on down. Good evening again. Uh, what you have before you is basically a brief presentation on um, the information that we've been able to gather regarding the scope of the Dunham Road sidewalk that was approved in the uh, two-year CIP. Um, I understand there's been some further thoughts in regards to that scope, and we're looking to basically uh, for the Public Works team to move forward. We just want to kind of define that scope to a more definitive direction, if you will. So what we did is we originally started off with uh, getting with a uh, local contractor that did the village sidewalks. Um, if you remember, that project went very smooth. Uh, it was nine months ago that we put that project out to bid. The uh, contractor has agreed to honor the same unit pricing, so therefore um, we would recommend using him again uh, and his company with that. Um, what we're running into issues with is uh, Dunham Road is more than just a simple take out an existing sidewalk and replace like the village was. And I know we put some new section into the village, but the majority of that was also replacing existing sidewalk. Uh, the Livingston County Road Commission is, is really having trouble grasping onto issuing the permit without any sort of engineered plan for that. There's certainly some elevation challenges along Dunham Road. Um, we believe there's some utility challenges as well um, and possibly some wetland challenges depending on if we go on the north side the south side and how far we go um, so basically what I'm trying to do is get a defined scope uh, so I can get an engineering proposal and then based on the engineering proposal we can get an accurate quote for this construction project I see in your um, discussion you talk about the south side so was that kind of determined by the engineers looking at the project or <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, basically, Livingston County Road Commission is, is not keen um, on crossing without an intersection. Okay. Um, so by default, because our current path ends on the south side, the, the thought process was to carry it down and then cross at the high school being a, an intersection, but uh, an intersection without also a light. Um, Certainly there is one intersection before that. There's a little dirt road to the north, and forgive me, I don't, the name escapes me, but uh, that may be a possibility, although um, ultimately our existing path where it ends, not only are we challenged with the fact that it's not at an intersection, it has uh, probably the poorest sight distance along the south side of Dunham Road. And I don't know if you remember when we were talking about Sellers Park, there was a discussion about the feasibility of a park lot up there and that was a big issue with having an entrance or an exit off of Dunham Road where it's at is the grade would have to be brought down as well as tree removal because of this it did not meet the site distance requirements um, set forth by Livingston County Road Commission so there are certainly some different options on the table we can cross at any intersection um, the intersection at the high school just happened to be the only one with the light um, but we can also cross further east at the intersection to the, the gravel road going to the north. So we're looking at a total cost of about eighty thousand dollars, something. Like that. You know, I built in a slight contingency into that, and the, the number I came up with, I think, was eighty eighty eight thousand dollars. Um, These sixty two grand have put in another 14, fourteen fifteen thousand for engineering. Yeah, and then there was a, a slight contingency built onto that because that doesn't include any engineering for a retaining wall, which is most likely going to be required because of the where it kind of dips down. We also have some drainage issues. Um, not that we're going to. Uh, necessarily um, impact the drainage issue we just may have to extend the actual culverts out in order to uh, put a retaining wall in and perhaps backfill to put the sidewalk in I'm having a problem
problem with it. I, I got to tell. I just got to tell you, I'm having a problem. And, um, not that we don't need a sidewalk. I, I understand we need sidewalks. Um, but I'm just having. I would hope the board will just reconsider what we're doing. We're spending eighty thousand plus dollars on a sidewalk that goes to nowhere. I mean, the sidewalk goes to the entrance to the high school, which they still have to walk on the driveway to get to their car or back to the high school. And it, and it goes to the east, where they have to cross the street, and it leads to another pathway. So, I mean, I, I just, I think that uh, for several reasons, I, I, I'm, I would like to reconsider this, only because I think that um, it is a safety feature for kids who will go to, or anybody that walking from the high school to the park, um, and I understand that, but the, nobody's doing that right now, because there's nothing in the park for them to walk through other than another walking path. <laughs> so, um, and I also think that because it is a safety feature for some of the students, that perhaps we should be talking to the schools, um, and next time they have a capital improvement bond that comes up, and one's going to be coming up because they're going to be needing to do some capital improvements, that they include the sidewalk, and we'll participate with them on the sidewalk at that point. I think, I think that they should participate in this. There's going to be issues with the um, central office where a sidewalk needs to be put in front of that building. So um, I think if we just postpone this only because we have so many other things in the park that are also safety issues, especially at... Um, Not Heritage Park at the um, Settlers. Pardon me. At Heritage Park, yeah. um, where we have hundreds of kids playing uh, different types of sports, and no shelters, no restrooms, no anything. <laughs> and I, I just think that eighty thousand dollars would go much farther there right now than into a sidewalk that leads to nowhere that could be put in later after there's some amenities in the Settlers Park that people would want to walk to. I just yes. would hope the board would reconsider it, that's all. Larry, can I say something? Okay, um, we do have a capital improvement plan, and so I think structures and things like that, I wouldn't be in favor of switching out projects like that, because we have a capital improvement plan. I, structures, you know, safety for the kids, we need to put that into our capital improvement plan, not just switch out projects. But, and I also think... So I, I wasn't finished though, Kathy, oh. if you don't mind. Okay, thank you. If we want to put a sidewalk in, I think we should look at putting a sidewalk across the, um, the Hero Building and connect to the, high, uh, to the fire department and look at the possibilities of putting a um, flashing crosswalk either at the corner or a flashing crosswalk where we have put the light over by the baseball fields. They, they do it in downtown Brighton. They do it in downtown Milford. Mm -hmm. It's just a button they push and it flashes and warn cars that people are going to be crossing and pedestrian crossing there, they would stop. I don't know why we couldn't do that at the crosswalk where we have over by the uh, baseball fields where kids cross to come over to the uh, teen center or at the corner of Dunham, extend a sidewalk across the teen center, put it there. So we do need sidewalks. And that, to me, it would be a more of a safety issue in today's world than putting this sidewalk in, if that's what we want to do. So you know, there's just so many things that we need. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. Okay, yeah, and I do agree with you. Um, side, we're going to need sidewalks all over, and right now many of our sidewalks go nowhere. And I could see postponing this only to the fact of maybe seeing if the schools would want be able to get involved with us. And I do agree, they're going to have to get involved with the one out on 59 too, so we do need that. Um, 
And I, I agree with the other thing, too, about the crosswalk and the sidewalk at Hero Center. I think those would be valuable. But I think those are all discussions that need to go into our capital improvement plan. And we're going to have that discussion next month, right? Yes. So I, I would say those are that. Now, if you want to postpone this because you want to see if the schools get involved, I would agree with that. Otherwise, I think we need to start our sidewalk expansion wherever we can put it into our – and we did put this on the capital improvement plan. So, you know. That's kind of where I am right now. That doesn't mean we can't reconsider it and discuss it further. Mm -hmm. I will say, I, I believe, and I, I can't say for certain on this, but the schools are limited to what they can spend um, get their capital bond for it when it comes to the right of ways. I mean, there's only so much, and I, I, I think they're allowed to. Now, this may fit within that, that, that those rules, but I know. There's a reason why Clark Road only went so, you know, so far, and, and or Dunham Road is paved only so far. There's reasons for that, um, and I don't even know if the schools paid for that. That might have been a they road condition. No, they, they, they did pay part of it. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I actually agree with both of you on on, on these things, but I. I, I not, I don't recall, and I, I have to apologize. Did, why was this a priority over some other sidewalk areas? Because I, I thought we had talked about um, the sidewalk going down Heartland Road and connecting that, sort of looping around and connecting to the to the village, so that you have a walkway that takes you from, you know, the the development, the Ramco Gershenson Meyer development area. All the way past, you know, next to the um, uh, the two condo developments further down, mm -hmm. and ultimately to the school, so that you know you sort of have a you could almost loop around if you had that. So yeah. I thought we were looking at that, and I didn't know where we were. On that. I can speak a little to it, and I think it all, it all relates. Um, you know, this particular project sort of got um, uh, its own special treatment because it wasn't considered as part of the roads task force per se, the, what was originally the roads and pathways task force because the board had already decided to move forward with us before asking the task force for input on which connections were more important. This one was viewed, and there were a number of reasons for it, and it wasn't um, uh, it certainly recognized that once you get to the high school, there aren't pathways there. Uh, there was an acknowledgement that there are a number of people who use the school campus in the village area for walking uh, and walkability and that this connection would make those two and they use the inner network of driveways and whatever on the school campus to facilitate that there was an acknowledgement of that uh, I, I think everybody could agree this probably isn't the most important of, of the sidewalks it's just that it got put into the CIP because the board was ready to see it happen while the task force was still working on its pathway priorities those projects We'll be we'll be talking about them for next year. The uh, in front of Heart Heartland Road, in front of Springer, in front of uh, the crosswalk, and those things. The connection down Heartland Road down to the Ramco Gershenson development. Those will be a part of the sidewalk program we're looking at for 2016. And, and I guess that's where I'm going with yeah. this: is that uh, in light of the fact that the road the road pathway road and pathway changed the direction, yeah. that group had decided you know pathways wouldn't be part of. The, the millage proposal and so forth. Maybe we need to go back and rethink where we're going to allocate resources in light of the fact that it's those are going to become more of a general fund slash SAD type of program. Um, so I, I'm I think we can postpone this. I, I would I would I don't think we should take it off the list, but I think we might postpone it for all the reasons that other folks have talked about tonight. Asking. Yeah, and that certainly, uh, uh, of course, that's your privilege. The only thing I would just speak to is uh, I don't. To, it wouldn't. It would just delay it. It would not necessarily open up an opportunity to fast forward projects that we weren't anticipating for this year. So it wouldn't be a trade. We just would be delaying what, the inevitable, so to speak, of, and, and package it with the rest of the sidewalk projects and put together one program and come back for that for 2016. If the board would like to take that approach. Well, I mean, the other option is to just set it aside into the another. Just, I, the I'm looking at we just reprioritize re the, the sidewalks. That's all. Yeah. I, 
I agree with Joe that I think the one down Harlan Road is more. This one we're ready to go forward with this year. To do the other sidewalks, I can't say that we would be ready to get them done this year. There's a lot of work to be done because there's M59. There's a lot of sidewalks to be done. This one we're ready to go because it was in the CIP last year to do this. Uh, to do to fa we wouldn't be able to fast forward or swap out other projects. We just would be not doing this one this year, and that's fine. We can put it in with the rest of the sidewalk plan and uh, and get that added to the preparations for 2016 if the board would like. I mean, I, I agree there's more discussion needed to be had, but it also needs to consider the, what you're doing in Settlers Park. I mean, if you do put in a disc golf course of some kind and workout stations, it's going to immediately attract the high school kids a lot quicker than... So again, I, I don't think at this point we really need that sidewalk, but without looking at the scope of what we're doing with the park projects, you may not be able to push it off too far. And that's the other thing you can do is, I mean, we're, we're going to get right deep into all those things you talked about in the CIP next month. June 2nd meeting, you're going to see an uh, initial draft for discussion. We're going to lean into that, and hopefully by June 30th meeting, be ready to have a CIP that you're ready to approve uh, for the 2016-17. And uh, that will probably provide a better context of the bigger picture and meet all the goals. I, I think you're going to find that those structures at the parks are going to be the top of this. I think you're going to find that we have the cash flow in the capital projects fund uh, to be able to do those things that you want to do. And if you'd like to wait until that discussion next month, you know, that this can wait. And if for some reason it, it'll just be ready for you to say, let's do it if you want to do it uh, later this year. Yeah, well, that's what I'm kind of thinking. If we can put this off just through that discussion, because Joe said nobody uses it, but kids do use that path right now to go to school. We see skateboarders going to school every day. They cross over after school and they're out here in the park. So we already do have kids using it, and I agree. If we put in these other amenities, kids are going to be using it even more after school. So I'd like to just see it put into that capital improvement discussion so that we could possibly... We could do that. Sam. Plus, we're missing two other members tonight. There's one, there's one thing that I need to know, though. Uh, you mentioned that... Um, person that bid on the sidewalk said they would hold the price. Has it gone up considerably? No. No? That's okay. That's good. I just I think if we go to the schools and we ask them, they're going to obviously say no. There's no money in the budget. But I know that there's going to be a bond coming up sooner or later, and we need to find out approximately when that would be to see if we can participate mm -hmm. in possibly that improvement. It doesn't hurt to ask. I mean, we need to ask that question. And we certainly will. Money. I mean, but it was already in, in my notes to, to make that connection and then make that ask. Um, even if it were on a fast track, it would be next bond election, or next election date, by the time they fund it. When they get, it would be a delay if that's worthwhile to the board and, and having the cost sharing aspect. Uh, we'll certainly pursue that. So I'll ask. Just curious, if we put the sidewalk in and it's on the south side of the street here, under our uh, sidewalk ordinance, would that sidewalk now be the responsibility of those two homeowners? Uh, by the ordinance, yes. Um, and that would be a question for the board: is if if that's what if that would be the board's intent, or if the board would prefer to take care of it as a public purpose or not. So that that would be your choice as a policy decision. So an agreement to push this off until the capital improvement well, I, discussion. I think we should do that. And besides, we do have two mm -hmm. uh, board members that are not present. Um, okay. Sounds good. And that moves us into the last item there, the consolidated trash pilot study. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, I'll hand it over to Bob here. Just uh, if you, you may recall, it's been a few meetings now. I had mentioned that we had a neighborhood approach us about uh, doing an SAD petition for this reason. Uh, we saw it as a potential opportunity to do a pilot for the bigger issue that the road task force had identified. Uh, you have in front of you, uh, uh, it's uh, one of the confidential attachments you need to log in for, but you know, so the scope of uh, a block of neighborhoods in, in a one section of the township that uh, we could potentially circulate petitions and do a pilot project on. And uh, uh, I think there could offer a lot of win-win. Uh, before we move forward with that, and certainly before we put a petition out there, uh, we'd be interested in the board's uh, input on that. Uh, Bob, anything to add to that? Yeah, essentially this would just be um, kind of an update, if you will, as to the research that we've we've come up with. Uh, Public Works has been reaching out with different contractors. We've all, also been working with um, different municipalities who do offer this service uh, as a uh, municipal service, if you will. Um, and basically the, the design parameters are you really don't want to drop it or and drop anybody's level of services um, with any sort of trash SAD. It's a reoccurring theme that you really want to just offer the most services you can and then uh, have a reduced cost for those services based on the scale of the project. Um, the heartburn from residents comes when they have an existing service that you take away. So what this does is uh, we basically designed a scope that would offer uh, the existing services that the majority of our residents uh, have, um, and those are what the pilot study scope uh, includes, which would be your uh, standard weekly trash collection, weekly recycling, and bi-weekly yard waste collection. Um, we're looking into some sort of large item pickup service. Um, Right now, the scope is, is designed something along the lines of one free per year, and then additional pricing would be determined based on size. Um, all the contractors we spoke with said there's no flat rate you can do for a large item um, just because of the sheer size, and then some sort of, if, if uh, there's any sort of hazardous type material, and, and I use that term loosely because nobody's going to really accept hazardous materials, but uh, tube TVs, for instance, have recently come in to a different realm of recycling and now cost a fee to get rid of. And um, I know for our large item cleanup when we were scoping it out, we were looking to pay a dollar per inch in diameter. Um, so just last year, there was no fee and electronics recycling companies would take them left and right. So these are just things where we're trying to keep up with the changes here. Um, it includes a standard 96 gallon trash cart. Um, one of the key features of, of this particular pilot study as well as if the effort is to move even on a larger scale, uh, the recommendation would be for the township to actually purchase the carts outright. What that would do is it would prevent us from locking in with any one contractor at any time if we were to cancel a contract. We wouldn't have to go out and replace all those trash receptacles. Basically, we would have the township logo on them and simply uh, it would be subsidized in, in the the fee, if you will, um, but we would maintain and replace them as necessary. But um, like I say, it eliminates tying us into one contractor and then trying to switch all those carts out if we were to s decided to switch contractors. So uh, it also includes a standard recycle bin. So I'll be happy to answer any questions of where we're at right now with this research. Um, Certainly, this doesn't account for every every particular instance within the township uh, within that targeted pilot study. We believe this scope will function very well, um, although there will be additional parameters if we decide to go outside that scope. Bob, have you considered, um, this goes back to when I was working at Dearborn, and they privatized the uh, trash collection. For the first, I'm trying to remember, maybe four or five years, um, they split the city in half and hit two vendors and at the end of that period they were able to really tell whether or not you know where the complaints were coming from which vendor and eventually one vendor got the whole whole city um, I don't know if that's even feasible in our uh, the way you're looking at it or it, it certainly is feasible and there's there's many different approaches that being one that was a um, 
frequently used. Um, given the nature of this particular pilot study, and such a, since it's such a small area, that particular instance doesn't make if efficient sense, if you will. But yes, certainly if we were to go to a much larger scale down the road, we would, we would entertain that as well. So how close are you to getting out petitions and getting started? Well, with the blessing of the township board, um, I wanted to make sure, basically this is an update. As long as everybody's uh, in agreement with moving forward on this, I can certainly move forward and we'll uh, develop the petitions. What we would like to do is reach out to the pilot study uh, HOAs, uh, deliver them the petition, and then uh, probably give them about 30 to 45 days to collect signatures and then bring it back before the board. I say we move forward. Mm-hmm. Me too. Thank you. It's uh, board consensus. We'll, we'll keep moving and, and uh, circulate. Again, this is a voluntary uh, petition, SAD, so... Yeah, I think it's going to be great. It looks like it'll save money for the residents and save the roads with having many trucks going up and down every day. And just as an added note, I just want to prepare you. We, I, I've contacted about five or six homeowners association presidents, and apparently it's kind of like wildfire. Uh, we've already been approached by multiple associations that are not in the pilot designated area. Um, looking to do this as well. So um, I think that's a welcome surprise, quite frankly, and uh, just that we may get some requests for additional properties. Would it hurt to get a township, a whole township bid? Um, it certainly would not hurt. Um, it's definitely something we'll, we're looking into even with the pilot. We're going to go kind of a smaller scale. Um, once we get into the whole township, we definitely have to get into some other parameters. I'll give you an instance. There's, there's some properties at the north end of town um, who have multiple cans. So certainly we wouldn't want the other residents to subsidize them. So we'd have to determine if it's a per can fee or you know per recycle bin fee. Um, so that's kind of some of the anomalies we're working with right now. Um, that's why uh, it was recommended as much as contractors may like to say, hey, we'll include yard base collection, there is a limit and you have to spell that out. It's what we've been told by other municipalities because you will, much like large item cleanup day, hmm. you'll have somebody who says, oh, you take yard waste and they're going to have, you know, it's not uncommon to have once or twice a year 80 or 90 bags out at the curb and what you end up doing then is subsidizing through the other residents. So, yes, it's certainly... Uh, well, how, how do other municipalities handle it? They must have the same issues. They do and it, it's what's spelled out you here spelled in the it. scope. Yeah. Basically, every other week you would get five of your standard paper bags you can buy at ACO or Home Depot, anything like that. You get five of those free any additional bag would simply be one dollar additional. This is the strategic plan anticipates we would dive into the township wide feasibility uh, late in the second half of 2016. And that's definitely our goal. This the reason for the pilot studies here. You have a lot of homogenous properties, same issues. They're in one concentrated area, and it's a limited amount, not to overburden uh, oversight. And uh, we'll get a chance to see you know, what kind of customer service issues. Uh, you know how much are we playing uh, having to oversee the. Contractor and take phone calls and all that, so that's that's the idea here, and that will definitely be great homework for us when in 2016 we're talking about feasibility township wide. Were you going to put that on the survey? No? Uh, there will be some questions I'm about that for sure. Mm -hmm. In order to put on a survey, when we need some idea of what the cost would be to see. Yeah, and this gives us an idea. This isn't it's a ballpark, but it's well, the reality is, if we want township wide, the cost would be less than this. Yeah. Pardon me. If we want township wide, the cost would be less than this. Yeah. Yeah. And this is most most homeowners are paying at least forty five dollars a quarter. That's, if not, that's not a whole lot less than what I'm paying right now. Right. Uh, but I do know of others in the township that that's probably twenty dollars less than. Yep. In mm -hmm. yeah. order. Yeah. Even if I could, um, given the scope of roughly 665 new accounts, we're not going to recognize the cost savings because of this pilot study being so small. It would be when we go township-wide that we'll recognize a significant savings. Yeah, but, yeah but still. Yeah. Yeah. 
we'll move forward. We'll be back. Thank you. Are there items for discussion? Nope. Please to adjourn. Second. <coughs> Is that a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. They are adjourned. Thank you.